name's Walt. I work as night watchman here at Fred's Wax Museum to put myself through criminology college. It used to be very lonely, until recently when I plugged in my crime computer. Suddenly, oscillating vibrations brought to life three legendary monsters. Dracula! The Werewolf! And Frankenstein! Creatures hated and feared for centuries, now determined to make up for their past misbehaving by fighting crime wherever they find it. Together, we're the Monster Squad! No more goofing off. All right, gentlemen, now, let's take it from the top. <clears throat> a one, and a two, and a... <laughs> Cut it out, you guys. I want to watch this. It's a telethon for the most dangerous disease in the world. Something that kills more people than anything else. What's that, Walt? Natural causes. Natural causes? Natural causes? Well, the more popular diseases were taken by other comedians. So Jackie Joey jumped on this and he's doing a terrific job. Watch. Hi again, disease fans. This is Jackie Joey, your congenial and most sincere host, welcoming you to the third hour of the Natural Causes Telethon. And the money continues to dribble in. Now, this ball may look half full to you, but to me, it's half empty. So why don't you unbuckle your money belts out there and don't just give till it hurts. Give till it feels good. Even as I speak, ten people per minute are succumbing to this dread affliction. So help us stamp out this scourge of all scourges. Natural causes. And now checking the big tote board, let's check and see what the big tote is. The big tote is... 450,701 dollars. How about that? All right, it's entertainment time again. A new group on the rock and roll scene. Here, ladies and gentlemen, the group called, um... The group called, um... What's the name of your group, anyway? Take them up! What a great name for a group. How about a big hand for Stake them up! That's not the name of the group, you six-foot power teeth. That's what we want you to do! These aren't guitars, you square from Bel Air. These are laser beam disintegrators. And we're here to get your guilt, so... Pack it! Hey, you can't do that! Put that money back! For all you nosy people at home, here's a station range that will really break your station. <laughs> Those hippies are rubbing the telephone. And taking all that money to fight natural causes. We better do something fast! Exactly. Drac, move your tail for us. Take a flyer. Go check the street for any speeding vehicles. I am going as we speak. You guys, go in the monster van to the television studio and nose around for clues. Gotcha. I'm gonna get on the computer and see what information I can dig up. We'll feed you back whatever we can get. Okay, you guys, time is of the essence. We have got to get that money back so that they can overcome mankind's greatest ailment. Now hop to it. Play mad 
dancing around God where all the big superstar rock groups go? Why not? I'm a mellow fellow, a real gone guy, one of today's children. Hey, Bob, a rebob. Uh, Madison Round Garden. <laughs> it sounds great, boss. Uh, but uh, who's gonna book us there? And Dante, we you school that fool to the rules of reality? Well, uh, the fact of the matter is nobody is gonna book us there. Huh? The boss has been tossed out of every concert hall in America for disturbing the peace. And now that I have this money, this lovely lucre, these adorable spondulics, I will book us there. And furthermore, I will hire an audience at $10 a piece to sit there and listen as I play. And they will come to laugh, I know. But they will stay to cheer and huzzah and bravo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if we get enough money to make people sit through a whole evening of his music. <laughs> Let's see, what shall I perform to send that audience out beyond the borders of musical wonderfulness? Say anything? A fast-moving convertible heading north-northwest on West 20th Street with three suspicious-looking characters and several bags of money. That just might be them. <laughs> What'd you guys find out at the TV studio? A bunch of lamp chop bones and the unmistakable scent of bow rosin in the room. What do you think it all means? Simple. Someone was playing a violin while eating their pet lamb. That's fine. <laughs> but wrong. Guys find anything else? I found this floor plan to the Teleton TV studio. It shows a large X where the money might be, and three itty-bitty X's where three musicians holding laser-type instruments might stand. Also, on the other side, it says, robbery plan. Uh, that's a slim lead, Frank, but it just might work. Bruce, put that in the instant map analyzer. <laughs> what does it say? Interesting. The map of this floor plan was drawn by a left-handed person with six fingers, and the last known whereabouts of such a person was in the northeastern section of the city at the Lorenzo Music Academy. Can you get us anything more specific? <laughs> Sorry, squad. Men, you saw the wanton and brazen manner in which this heinous criminal robbed the telethon. Yeah, well, they're all wanton and brazen. It comes with being a crook. <laughs> there is one thing we should know. What's that? Where is it? Well, what could it be, but it's the corner of Primrose Lane and Abbey Road. I wish I had thought of that. Let's go, squad. Jive cats, what may I do for you? I'm Lorenzo Musica, hip is in a hip. My friend and I are here to take music lessons. And you want me to teach you? I chortle at the thought. Chortle, chortle. Yes, sir. Who sent you here? Our parents. There's something very strange going on. Practice your skills, but be slow about it. What's going on, boss? Watch these guys very carefully, and uh, I smell something fishy. Four hundred and two thousand nine hundred and three, four hundred and two thousand nine hundred and four, four hundred and two thousand nine hundred and five, four hundred and two thousand nine hundred and six, four hundred and two thousand. That's enough of that. Wow, uh, a talking dog. Get into that closet and do it now. Hey, why don't you let me be your manager? We we can make millions, you and I. We, we can do dog food commercials and. And do your personal testimonials and three collars. Get in the closet. 
You'd be famous, sure. Oh, you'd have all the girls running after you. Even Lassie'd finally come home if she met you. <laughs> Lassie. be in charge here. I have come to take music lessons. Is this Halloween or what? Who are you? My parents told me to come here for lessons. Oh, well, you come in and play the scale. I've got a drum lesson upstairs I must attend to. Play, Phyllis, play. <laughs> Boss, he had lots of hair and fangs and, 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 and pointed ears. I heard of this guy, boss. He, he's some kind of crime fighter. Uh, hangs out with a, a great big guy in platform shoes. Yeah, and a hip dude with a pasty face and a cape. Right, boss. The Monster Squad. Of course. That's who they are. They followed us from the TV station. Well, they're not going to rob me of my chance to appear at Madison Round Garden. <laughs> I'll play them a riff that will send them. <laughs> send them out of this world. <laughs> you, go back in the closet. Back in the closet? Back in the closet. <laughs> Put down a fiddle. Being you showed such great promise, I decided to give you my stopping at the Savoy super groovy lesson in the chamber. So you three young gentlemen, follow me and walk this way. I'm going to give you a lesson you'll never forget. surrounded by 1,000 watts of voltage in woofers and tweeters designed to woof and tweet you to extinction. This is a song that will send you brothers into never, never land beyond the blue horizon. And then I'm gonna get us out of here. <laughs> Not only can't you punch your way out because the glass is five inches thick, but so are the walls too, you dig? <laughs> Let's try and come catch Wilson at the museum. You know what to do. I know the guys are trying to reach me, but the noise is deafening. 
the money and pack it. I must get to Madison Round Garden where I'm entertaining the masses. I already booked 18,000 people through the Morris William Agency and they're waiting to see me. I won't forget. <laughs> That's Drax's voice. And whatever that other cacophony is, it's preventing them from getting through. Hold on, you guys. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm going to try and get through. Let's see. First, I've got to feed Drac's voice range into the computer. Computer. Dracula's voice range. Four octaves, 26 decibels. You guys, I think I've figured out a way to get through. Squad. Hold on! What an enormous hit I'll be! You mean you actually paid $10 a hit to those people? Are you questioning my business acumen? If so, would you like to spend some time in my chamber? To hear and send to Drac, turn voice filter and Dolby Poltec 32 decibels and 120 degrees. Good boy. Voice filter. Dolby Poltic. Drac, can you hear me now? Can you read me now? Well, I can hear you. I can't hear you. Okay, Drac. I've just filtered out my transmission to combat the sound on your frequency. Now I'm going to feed Frank and Bruce's info into the computer. In a moment, they won't hear the sound either. All right, I've just cleared Frank and Bruce. It stopped. Well, the music stopped. No, Bruce, it's still going on. You just can't hear it. We gotta get out of here. And we gotta get those guys. Hold on, men. I'll think of something. Over and out. And after you bid me a fond ado and good luck, you can come back here and take care of these three any way you want. Dig. Duh. Squad, I've got an idea. Give me the composition of the room and the dimensions. Maybe I can figure something out. All right, Walter. The walls are made of unbreakable med glass. <laughs> and, and so is the floor and the ceiling. It is all five, five inches thick. How about the size? 12 by 8. Okay, just hold on a sec. Hurry up! <laughs> All right, squad. According to my calculations, the glass should crack if anyone can hit an E flat above high D. Well, don't look at me. I never got above a D. But you have the highest voice. I cannot do it. Drake. Are your corns bothering you today? Well, as a matter of fact, they are. Hey. Which foot? The right one. Thanks. <laughs>
The enemy and they are ours. Notify the police that the criminals have been captured and the money is safe. Lorenzo Musica, their leader, and Franz Schubert now have one thing in common an unfinished symphony. <laughs> <laughs> and I publicly and very sincerely want to thank the Monster Squad for recovering all the money for our Natural Causes TV telethon. Well, it's nothing that a couple of ear operations wouldn't fix. <laughs> and I especially would like to ask the guys in Monster Squad if they'd like to be guest stars on our upcoming TV special. What do you say, guys? Let me know. Bye-bye out there. <laughs> Want to become stars? Uh, I could do my dramatic readings of Casey Uppercat. I can do my imitations of Rin Tin Tin and President James Buchanan. Wait a minute. That was over a hundred years ago, Bruce. Nobody remembers how James Buchanan spoke. Well, I do. And take it from me, he does a very good imitation of James Buchanan. Thanks, Drunk. Here we can sing and dance, and I can do some card tricks. In it. I'm afraid that's a moment of glory we'll have to forego. It would really hinder our efficiency as crime fighters. He's right. Grib it. Almost on, guys. Time to get a good day's sleep. Sam's words of tongue and pen, what might have been. A career in show business, fancy cars, a nice old drafty mansion, ceaseless interviews with Rona Barrett, hands clutching at our clothes. On second thought, I'd rather just fight crime. <laughs> Me too. Grassy. Good night, guys. And thanks again for another job well done. Wow.